Hi everyone, we are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at YOLO. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you last attended which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then, choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session, and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others' work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app. I'm eagerly looking forward to all your submissions right after this class. Hi guys. Hello everybody. Nice to see you all. Hi. Hello. Hi Kushi. Hi Dwani. Hey, Paz. Hi, Sneha. Hey, 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 hey. So, hi, everybody. I hope all of you are doing really, really well and having a nice time. So, we have a new class today and it's the watercolor coffee mug. We are going to make use of these watercolors. Some really, really new techniques in this I have really, really new techniques in this class that we are going to learn with watercolors. We are going to try with watercolors. And by the end of this class, you will have a beautiful coffee mug ready in front of you. And we'll make it look as realistic as possible. Okay, so this will be possible only if all of y'all quickly give me a thumbs up in the chat section that you guys are ready with your art materials. And you are all excited to get the class started. Yes. So I need thumbs ups coming in the chat section. Give me a quick virtual high five that you are ready with your art materials. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a high five. And show some excitement that you guys are ready with your art materials for the class to get started. You are ready to get lots and lots of learnings about what colors in this class. Yes. Come on, quickly. So for everybody who's new here, hello, my name is Neharika and I'm going to conduct this class where we are going to create a beautiful illustration of a coffee mug and also going to learn a lot, many properties of this watercolor medium. So make sure that you have all your art materials ready with you to get the class started. We're going to just start in a moment. But I need some thumbs ups coming in from all of y'all that you are ready and you are all excited for the class to get started. Yes, come on, quickly. So still very low, very low on your excitement. Come on, quickly, I need thumbs ups. I need a big smile on your faces that yes, you're ready with your art materials and let it get started. Come on. Yes, I now see some smiles coming on my screen. I see some more thumbs ups coming in. Awesome. So do not worry about the art materials. When I share the screen, the first thing that I'm going to do is tell you about the art materials. Okay, so have some patience in that regard. I'm quickly sharing the screen and then we will be starting the class. 
Okay. So I've shared the screen and I hope you're able to view the screen as well now. So as I said, when I share the screen, when I begin, I'll start with the list of art materials itself. So let us begin with the art materials. Awesome. So first, I have an A5 size of white drawing sheet over here. You need an A5 size of white drawing sheet. If you have an A4 size, you can just cut it into half and you will have an A5 size of white drawing sheet. An A5 size. Second, you need a pencil and an eraser just to create some rough sketches. And in case you end up making some mistakes, you can erase those with an eraser. So a pencil and an eraser are must. Next, since this is a watercolor course, you must have these watercolors. You need not have too many of these shades. The ones I'm using here are from Camel. So I'm going to use these watercolor cakes. So understand what is watercolor cakes at the first place. When these colors or these pigments, pigments are nothing but colors only. When these pigments are in a form of a cake, they are in a solid manner. They get activated when you add water into them. Those are called as cakes and these are watercolor cakes because the pigment is in a solid manner. It is placed in the form of a cake, tiny cakes in this palette. So we have these watercolor cakes. So make sure you also you have watercolors available with you. You need not typically have watercolor cakes itself, but make sure that you have watercolor paints with you. Fourth, we need the brushes. I have two brush over here. The two brushes over here, one is a thin one, one is a slightly thicker one. So you can also have a combination of these or in case you're not having two brushes, you can simply use any one which is available with you. But uh, as far as possible, make sure that you're using a round brush, okay? Avoid using a flat brush in this class. Try making use of a round brush as far as possible. So I have two of these, a thin and a thick one. The fifth I have is a plate over here. So this is a regular normal saucer that I have. I'm going to make use of it like a palette. What you can do is if you're not having a plate or something like this at your place you can use the lid of your uh, watercolor pack itself or you can use a palette if you have it available at your place so you can either use a plate or you can use the container in which your watercolors are placed so we need a plate for mixing the colors with water or some of those techniques so make sure you have a plate with you that is what we need or a palette would also work and then we would need a water container of course so we need water primarily for activating the colors and also for cleaning the brushes so make sure that you have a water container available with you at any cost so make a quick checkpoint that you have water colors you have brushes, you have a palette, you have a jar of water or water container. Okay. And lastly, you also need something else. So carefully pay attention to what do we need. So I have the circular bowl over here. So we just need a circular object. It could be a mama's bangle. It could be a tape roll, something which is circular. We just need to draw a circle and we need something which is circular. In case you're having a compass available at your place, a rounder which is available at your place, you can also use that. But I think this bowl would be available at most of your places. So make sure you have something like this just to draw a circle. So this is something which is just a, uh, having a circular circumference. You need that to draw a circle. In case you're not having any of these, it's fine. You can skip the process. You can draw a circle free-handed if that's possible, okay? So it's fine if you're not uh, having any of these available with you at the moment. You can just free-handedly create the circle, okay? So that is all that we need in today's class. So let us begin with the rough sketch first. So we are going to first place this bowl or whatever circular object that you have on the sheet 
and then trace the circle out of it. Trace the circumference. Make sure you're placing it slightly at the center of the sheet. And then just draw a circle. So I'm just drawing a circle, creating an outline. Simple. That is all that we need for the circular object. That is just the one basic reason we need a circular object. We need to create a circle like this. In case you are unable to find out, find any kind of circular object at your place, you can just simply freehandedly draw this and get ready with the first rough sketch, the first part of the rough sketch, that is a circle. So once done with the circle, we are going to draw another circle and this time it's going to be freehand inside the circle. Or rather, let's begin with the handle of this coffee mug. So since this is the top view of the coffee mug, the handle would look a little different to you. So we are starting by drawing a diagonal line at one of the side and then we draw a line which is parallel to it. So I hope you are able to see these two parallel lines that I've created. And now I'm going to join these two parallel lines with the help of a curve. So as I said, since this is the top view of the coffee mug, it would look something like this to us. And now we would go ahead and give another circle inside the larger circle that we have drawn, just like the outer circle. But this time we are drawing it three-handed. It's fine if you're not extremely perfect at it. You can be totally rough, but try to make it in alignment to the outer circle. Okay? So that is what we have created up to now. I'm going to quickly repeat a part of it. Let's begin from here. We started by drawing a circle with some kind of circular object. Then we went ahead and gave these hand, gave a uh, the handle. Here I've just created these two diagonal lines and I've joined it with the help of a curved line. As I said, this is the top portion, the top view of the coffee mug. That's the reason it is looking a little different from this angle. To me, this personally looks like a magnifying glass, but let's keep our jokes aside and focus on our artwork. And then Lastly, we go ahead and draw another circle inside the larger circle. And this time we are going freehand with it. Freehand means we are not using any kind of tools. We are just going ahead with the pencil and our beautiful magical hands to draw the circle. Okay. So we are just getting done with the mug of the coffee. So we have the mug or the coffee mug ready in front. It's time to fill coffee into it. So just for the part of the rough sketch, there are certain things that we are going to draw, which may not make sense to you now. Okay. So I want all of y'all to be patient while we move on with the, say, uh, the colors part. But just for now, there's something kind of, there's some, there's some uh, rough that we need to create so make sure that you're also creating somewhat the same thing so once done with the coffee mug we are going to add a little details inside it now so make sure you have your eyes on the screen so i start from one side i draw a slight curve and then i'm again drawing an elongated line something like this and the same on a lower portion as well okay so this is something that i've created it may not make sense to you up till now that what it is but when we add colors to this portion it will make a lot more sense to you and you'll understand the reason why we have done we have done this so just for a moment all of y'all just create this and when we add color you'll understand why we did this okay so just this too rough portion. I may not know what do we call this as, but just something like this. Okay. And now we are going to draw some circles around. So some slight portion inside over here again. And then we'll draw some circles. 
just randomly of varied sizes you are going to draw multiple circles inside they are just going to create them like the bubbles on the top portion of the cookie that we see okay not too much but just a little bit randomly all over the coffee mug area and that is what i have created up till now this that is a rough sketch that we have ready in front of us so i hope all of you are also done with the rough sketch so just before we get started with the paints and the watercolors and start our learning for the for the watercolors i want all of you all to give me a quick thumbs up in the chat section that the rough sketch is ready for you i do not want anybody to on to the learnings of the watercolors just because the rough sketch was not ready so first of all i need quick thumbs up in the chat section that you guys are done with the rough sketch and then i will begin with the watercolor portion okay so watercolor portion is something very new for all of you all this time so i don't want any of you all to miss this so make sure that now you're giving me thumbs up in the chat section that you're done with the rough sketch and then we will just get started with the watercolor part okay come on quickly thumbs up's coming in the chat section yes giving you last 10 seconds to give me thumbs up that you're ready with the rough sketch let's get started with the watercolors give me a thumbs up yes come on quick very good very good so i have received a lot many thumbs ups and i now think it's time to get started with the watercolor portion so listen to me carefully while we begin with the watercolor portion i'm going to repeat each and every step twice okay so just for the first time when i'm sharing something make sure that you have all your eyes on the screen and then when i'm repeating it you're creating it for yourself or you're following the same technique on your rough sketches okay do not rush the process you never never rush the process when you are working with watercolors okay so never rush the process be patient with watercolors and as i said just for the first time when i'm showing it i want all of your eyes to be on the screen i want all of you all to understand the learning understand the process of working with uh watercolors and then when i'm repeating it you all can create it for yourself okay awesome so let us get started now just take my watercolors over here and the plate you can use a palette as well okay awesome so i'm starting with a thicker brush this time and then i'm dipping it into water i'm dipping it into water if you could spot it here i'm taking the shade of brown i'm adding color and i'm i'm adding water to the brown pigment over here to activate the color so that i have good amount of color on to my brush so i'm adding water and i'm taking a little out of it on to the palette so i've just dabbed my brush into the pigment into the color placed it on to the palette and now i'm going to add water into it okay so i'm adding water into it because the number one principle of watercolors is that when we add water to the paint it will get lighter in shade okay so the more and more water you add to the shade or the pigment or the color it will become lighter it will become lighter okay so since we are adding water over here it is going to be a lighter shade of brown that we have arrived on to and we are going to use this we are going to use this to cover the coffee portion okay so carefully observe what am i doing over here so i'm simply going ahead and giving a wash okay so this is nothing but this process is called as giving a wash giving a base giving a wash is what we are doing and we simply go ahead with the coffee area we do not add the same brown to the mug but just the coffee area okay so this was the technique number 1 and the principle number one was when water added to a pigment it becomes lighter in shade water added to the pigment of watercolor becomes lighter in shade okay so i'm repeating it for you let's begin from here 
we are going to first activate a shade of brown take a little bit of paint onto the palette and now add watercolor paint okay make it lighter and a little bit of water do not add too much of water just a little bit of it and now we are going to use that and give a light wash to the entire area okay so as i said this process of giving a base is called as giving a wash we are giving a wash to the first area and we are being very very light so if you see just because we added a lot of water to the paint it has become very light in shade and that was the first property of watercolors that we learned now so make sure you are covering the entire area of coffee with this wash okay awesome so if you see there might not be too much of difference to be spotted but of course we have added a layer of wash over here so this is how it should look up till now now again we are going to take a little bit of brown paint onto the brush so this time we are directly taking a little bit of paint onto the brush and now again adding a little bit of water this time we are going to make it a little dark so we are going to add a little brown to it so again as i said when adding water to the color makes it lighter when we add more color it will become darker right so we are going to add a little bit of brown make it a little darker and now we are going to just give the edges this darker shade so just going ahead with the edges and if you could spot now this time it is a darker shade that we have so just go ahead with this darker shade do not worry if it's not blending in everything will fall into place when you're working with watercolors you need to be very very patient okay so be very patient while you're working with watercolors do not tend to add too much of water to your sheets so just give a border nice and fresh with the darker shade of brown okay just giving a darker shade edge or the boundary okay fast awesome. so once done i'm now going to clean the brush because i'm going to use a darker shade of brown that is available with me in case you're not having any other brown shade you can just continue with the same brown shade that you have used for the wash but i'm going to use a darker shade this time so i'm just getting rid of paint onto the brush and this is the second important thing when we work with watercolors the first was the property that we learned of adding water to the paint makes it lighter the second property now or this is not a property but a guideline but when you're working with watercolors make sure that if you're switching the paint if you're moving from one color to the other color make sure that you're cleaning your brushes nicely to get rid of the previous paint okay because we don't need any color mixing to happen while we are creating something so now since i already used the brown color i'm cleaning my brush nicely by dipping it into the water container getting rid of the first brown shade that i was using and then when the brush is clean i'm going to start with the next color okay and as i said i'm going to use a darker shade of brown so that is what i'm adding water to again following the similar process over here taking a little bit of color onto the palette and then i'm going to use that for the highlights just this portion over here where we have created with pencil that we have created with pencil i'm going to add this dark brown or you can simply do if you are not having a dark brown color you can simply use the paint with a little bit of water by that you will have a darker shade of brown yes so if you if you use or if you uh, add less water to the paint you will have a darker and a richer pigment and that's how you can use a darker shade and you can go ahead and add color in this way 
So just these highlights that we have created. So these were the highlights that we have created. This was a rough sketch while I was drawing the rough sketch. I was saying that this is something that would make sense while we are adding color. So this was the highlight portion that we were creating. And now also to the circle, you can just go ahead and add this darker shade of brown or any brown that you're using, but make sure it is a little darker as compared to the base. And just to ensure that your colors are darker, you can see that there's less quantity of water into your paint. By that, you will have a darker pigment. Okay. All right. So I'm just done with adding the darker portion now. I'm going to get rid of this brown. I'm using a thinner brush now because now we have to create some small dots all over this coffee mug. So I'm going to use a thinner brush and I'm going to use only a little bit of water into the paint because this time I want a darker shade of brown. So I'm not going to add too much of water, very little of water. And then I'm going to draw these dots. So see how I'm tearing these dots over here. Not all over, not too much, but just randomly. Because as I said, this is a coffee mug and this is the top portion. So if you see a coffee mug like this, you might spot these tiny bubbles at the top portion, right? So that is a froth of the coffee that is being created. So that is what I'm creating over here. So just tiny, tiny dots here and there. Randomly, be very, very light. Very light with your brush. Just use the tip of the brush to create these dots. You can also create some more dots over here if you want, if you would like to. All right, so just adding some dots. And this is the top portion of the coffee mug, as I said. So these are the highlights that we have already created, which are being made darker. And just some dots over here. So just getting rid of this brown paint now because I'm just done with the first area. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean the brush and now it's time to add color to the mug. So I'm going to add a nice bright blue to the mug. You can use any choice of your favorite color. You can use yellow, you can use red, you can use pink. I personally love blue. So I'm going to keep this coffee mug this time. So I'm not following any uh, different procedure for the mug, simply taking a little bit of paint onto the palette, adding water, and then going ahead with the paint. Okay. So just painting the coffee mug now onto the coffee mug. I'm painting it nice bright blue. And if you could see, since we have added a little bit of water to the paint, it onto the palette. The shade is a little lighter as compared to the original shade that we take from the uh, pigment itself. Okay. So again, reminding you about this property of watercolor that when we add water to the paint, we get a lighter shade of that paint, which is not the case with acrylics. Okay. So different mediums have different properties. When you want to make a a shade lighter in acrylics, you use white. But when you want to make a shade lighter in watercolors, you add water. There's a difference, okay? So understand that difference and use that difference while you're creating an art piece. I'm just done with the coffee mug. Let's go ahead with the handle now. Just giving a wash first nicely. Then I'm going to add a little bit of pigment. That is the color. So these are some professional terms that are being used. Colors are called as pigments. The watercolors are called as pigments in professional terms. 
just giving you a little bit of knowledge about it okay going to blend it nicely all right once done i think now we have our coffee mug ready but there's something more that i'm going to teach you now so we are going to give some highlights now okay so understand what highlights are when you place some kind of an object in light there is some portion which turns completely white of that object okay so let's say for example just this coffee mug now since this is drawn on paper it may not make much sense to you but when you place the actual coffee mug onto uh, on some surface and place light on it there's some portion which turns completely white and that is simply because of the reflection of that light that turns white at certain areas so those white areas that the the object which turns a little white at some parts due to the reflection of light are called as highlights and now we are going to draw or create some of these highlights with the white watercolor so make sure now again you have all your eyes on the screen so i'm going to get rid of the previous paint and i'm going to activate this white I'm going to add only a little bit of water because we need more of pigment we need that this time we need opaque white we don't need a transparent white we need an opaque white and i'm going to just give these tiny dots on each of the larger dots that we have created over here okay so just randomly on each of these uh, larger brown dots and just on the sides as well So if you understand, these are the highlights that we have created. Carefully observe the next time you have some coffee mug or a tea mug placed onto the table in light. There would be some portion which turns completely white, isn't it? So that portion is the highlight, and that is what we create over here. Okay. So just some white dots over here, a little bit over here as well. Some highlights. Awesome. So making these highlights is something which makes the artwork a little more realistic. So now just for a little bit of uh, just a little bit of highlight or some kind of background because this really looks very plain to me. i'm just going to go ahead and add some and some really tiny dots with the dark brown so i'm taking a little bit of paint over here and i'm going to quickly add some tiny random dots splattered all over because it looks really really incomplete to me to not see it with a background so i'm just going ahead with a dark brown shade and i'm just adding these tiny dots to make it look like some kind of coffee powder is filled at the background just making it look a little pleasing okay now looks better to me so you can skip this process if you want to but this is what was our project for today this was our illustration for today and i hope all of you all enjoyed creating this with me so these are the highlights that we have created that was the top view of the coffee mug give me a moment okay so that was our illustration so just before we end this class allow me to quickly summarize all the watercolor principles that we have learned in this class so we begin by number one principle that is when water added to the pigment of a watercolor it turns a little lighter in shade which is not the case in acrylics when we want to make a shade lighter in acrylics we add white but when to when we want to make a shade lighter in watercolors we add water next principle that we learned was 
when you're working with watercolors, you need to be extremely patient about it. And of course, when you're switching shades, when you're switching colors, clean your brushes nicely before you switch on to the next color. And finally, we learned a little bit about the highlights. Highlights is nothing but when you place certain object in light, there are certain portion which turns completely white. And that is what our colors highlights. And the same we try to reflect in our artwork and make it more look more realistic. Okay, so these were all the pretty much learnings of this class and about watercolors. So I hope all of y'all enjoyed this class, enjoyed creating this illustration with me. And do not forget to make your submissions for this class. And I'll see you super soon in the next class. Till then, please take care of yourself and enjoy all the hobby classes on Yolo. Okay, I'll see you super soon. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. We are excited to have you here in today's fun-filled learning session at Yolo. Here is a quick look at how you can submit your work after the class. As a first step, go to live.yolo.com. You can use any browser to access this site. On this page, you will see a list of all our classes. Scroll down and you can see the Submit Your Work button. And then you will see a list of the classes that you last attended, which could, for example, show the dance or craft or science experiment classes you've attended recently. Next, it will show you the list of children whose names are registered in this mobile number. Choose your name from this list to submit your work. For instance, if you are Satvik Kumar, choose that name. And then choose the class for which you would like to make your submission. For example, if you've attended the New Year's Masquerade Party session and you'd like to make the submission for this class, click on the Submit Your Work button below that. And then upload the photo you've taken. Choose the image from your phone and click Submit. You can scroll down and view all your past submissions and see how many of your friends or peers have liked your work. You can also see others work and like their work to inspire your friends. If you want to showcase your work on social media, that too is very simple. Click on Share, copy the link and post it on Instagram or Facebook or any other platform of your choice. Just a tiny reminder, your submission looks a lot better if you could click a photo in the landscape mode rather than the portrait mode. Do not forget to tag us at YOLO underscore app. I'm eagerly looking forward to all your submissions 